Welcome to MasteringInLogic.com's overview and lesson on using Logic Pro X 10.4's new studio strings. In this video, you'll learn what this plugin does, how to use it, and some ideas for bringing it into your own sessions. In my first video, looking at studio horns, I covered all the parameters and different sections of the studio instruments to give you a head start on using that plugin from Logic Pro X in your own sessions. I would imagine when first listening to this plugin, it seems as though it's not all that great, certainly when you compare it to dedicated string horn and orchestral libraries such as Spitfire Audio. Having said that, and of course no library is perfect, and there are many different ones on the market with different levels of quality, considering Studio Strings is a free edition for Logic Pro X users, I think it's actually pretty good. So in this video, I'm going to cover how to make the strings sound more natural. As Studio Strings functions in pretty much the same way as Studio Horns, and if you're new to the plugin, watch that video first to get an idea of how to use these Logic instruments. I covered everything you need to know in order to get your musical line sounding good in that video. So for this lesson, my main focus will be getting the Studio Strings to sound great in a mix. First off, let's check out the music and then I'll break it down and show you what I did in order to get the instruments sounding as real as possible. Stylistically, and it's not surprising as I work in TV, that the music sounds like it could be a cue from a TV drama show. Maybe. The reason I've done this is I want to show you that the strings, when they're laid bare on their own, played with a three note chord for example, with no dynamics, articulations, other instruments around them, as well as bad chord voicings, they will always sound unnatural. Any library will sound bad if it's not programmed correctly. Studio Strings is no different. Here's how it sounds without any treatment. Sounds bad, right? Well, here's a chord with more feel and emotion using the different articulations and processing within the plugin. Well, it's clear they sound very different. One is more natural than the other. To add, when using sample libraries, it's easier to get them to sound authentic if they're combined with other musical instruments and parts. That's not to say you couldn't use these for a string quartet, it's just there would be more chance of the library's inaccuracies standing out. So for this short cue, I surrounded the strings with drums, some effects, synth basses, and wrote the string lines to be harmonically sound and voiced with the intention that live players could perform the parts. If I was to score this to be recorded by a small live string section, for example. Even though I've added other instruments, the strings are still the dominant feature, providing much of the rhythm, harmonic content, and melodic lines. Let's hear the music with just the strings, then the rhythm section. As you can hear, the strings sound great on their own or with the music. The way I achieve this is to make use of the dynamics via CC checkbox. Each string line, whether it's violins 1, 2, the viola, cello or the double bass, has its own unique modulation data. This means the expression of each line is unique. Dynamically, each musical line moves in a slightly different way as the music moves from one dynamic section to the next. I also adjusted the release samples to tailor the sound for each instrument, so the note tails off, 
more naturally. Violin one is where a sustaining melody is played. The other strings are largely spiccatos and staccatos. In the mix, I found violin one to be too piercing. There was too many high frequencies, and at times it was a little unnatural. So to solve this, I made use of the filter dial to dial back some of the high frequencies using automation. This made the string line much more natural. The next thing to notice with Violin 1 is the part sounded better with the legato mode off, which is selected from the extended parameter section. The musical lines just seem to flow a little better from note to note. With the box checked, the initial attack when going from one note to the next seemed to be a little unnatural. This is just how it worked for this track. On another track, it might work better the opposite way round. In your own music, it's worth checking the box and A-Bing the result to see if there's any difference and which one you prefer. The next thing to think about is the articulations you want to use for each instrument. I like to split my strings out, which gives a greater degree of control and allows you to have different articulations playing for different members of the string family. If we look at the score, you can see the different articulations I use throughout the music. One thing I love about the new articulation sets is the articulation is reflected in the score, so staccatos, for example, will appear in the score every time you select staccato. Pretty cool. While we're here, looking at the score, notice that the instrumental parts don't get in the way of each other. The lines are relatively independent. There isn't a great deal of parallel fifths or octaves. The voicings aren't, they aren't bad which in the end all add up to a more musical line and real sounding string part. The music is really just sitting on a C minor chord, so if I voiced individual string parts badly, it wouldn't sound as natural. The next thing to look at is the processing. Some instruments have compression to bring them forward and some have EQ to either shape or bring frequencies forward or to remove some of the muddiness. This helps the strings sit better in the mix. The cello, for example, has an envelope to help the initial attack sound be a touch more aggressive. This adds to the performance as if the musician is hitting the strings slightly harder on the initial bow. Finally, the string section is bussed to a track stack where a touch more EQing and compression is added. The track stack also has a touch of automation at the end of the music to help with the crescendo. Of course, no string part is complete without it sitting in a reverberating space. And again, I've gone for chromoverb. It works. There's two reverbs, a long and short, giving a greater sense of space and these are simply blended on the bus sends until it feels right, for me anyway. This is then all combined with the rest of the music. The trumpets add a touch of brightness and automating the attack time helps make the part feel more subtle. The rhythm section adds, well, energy and a driving rhythm and the synth bass sounds help to add that modern TV drama twist. Everything you hear is all logic based synths, samples and of course the strings. The only non-logic parts are the two drum loops and an effect suite from Native Instruments. There's processing from third-party plugins, but you can easily use Logic's very own superb plugin set. So that's it. Combining the strings with varied dynamics, using the mod wheel, carefully choosing the articulations, chord voicing and musical lines, and automating different parts of the plugin, along with a healthy dose of reverb and other instruments, all add up to making a free plugin from Logic Pro X 10.4 sound very respectable indeed. Okay, it's not East West or Spitfire, but it's not a million miles away from some of the more expensive options on the market if you program it and use it carefully. In my opinion, studio instruments can get you a very long way. Thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel or check out my website, masteringinlogic.com, where you'll learn all about the mastering process using nothing but Logic Pro X plugins. Happy mixing, mastering, and string quartetting.